Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this is the newest pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. A very, very cute, fluffy puppy. So when I say the new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club, it is now November 15th, 2021. This pattern will be exclusive to the club until December 15th, 2021. And then sometime early in January, it'll be available in my regular shop at Shiny Happy World. So if you are in the club now, this is waiting for you, for you to download in the clubhouse. The pattern is there. If you join the club before December 15th, 2021, this is the pattern that you're going to get instant access to. Now I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay, here's how to assemble this little puppy block. I've got all of the pieces already cut out and I've got all of, you can see I've got all of the dotted lines from the back of the pattern transferred to the front. So I always start, when I do my assembly, I always start with whatever piece, and there's almost always a piece that lines up with almost always the bottom edge, every once in a while the side edge, and it'll say right on it, uh, line this edge up with the raw edge of the block. And that's to make it look like a photograph, kind of like you've just taken a picture of this cutie. So line that straight edge up with the straight edge at the bottom of the block. Next up, we are going to do the muzzle piece, this very fluffy muzzle. So I've transferred the dotted lines that were on the shoulder piece that show you where the muzzle lines up. And it can just look like a bunch of random jagged lines and it can you can feel difficult to line that up. But when I drew this, I've got all of the points kind of coming together at his chin. And you can see there's a point pointing this way. All of these are pointing this direction. All of these are pointing this direction. And this is where they come together. So you wanna look for the corresponding spot on the shoulder piece. So we've got points this way, this way, this way, and that's where they come together, the converging point. So that you line up and make sure that you've covered up your other pencil lines that you've transferred, and now you've got the muzzle in the right place. So I used pencil on this so that you could see it more clearly. In uh, real life, I probably would have used chalk, even though it doesn't show up very well with the white background. It shows up just enough on that blue that I could see it, but I wanted you guys to see it a little bit better in the video. So next step, we're gonna put the eyes in and we're gonna tuck them behind the muzzle. And just like before, you can see now these little points are coming out, out, out. And so you wanna look for the corresponding center point on the eye piece, and then just tuck it under enough so that it just overlaps your chalk lines. Same thing with the forehead piece. This little bit is gonna tuck behind the muzzle and the rest of it is gonna sit over top of the eye piece. So we tuck that in like that. And again, make sure that we are covering up the chalk lines on the darker blue piece. Now we've got two ears. Same thing, we've got these chalk lines, and I know from my reference photo that the ear tucks behind the first point of the lighter forehead fabric. So that helps me to orient those points. And same thing on this side, the ear tucks a little bit under, it's not all the way down here, it, it overlaps or underlaps, I guess we could more properly say. Just that first point of the forehead piece. All right, so now that is tucked under and every all of my chalk line guides are hidden. Just nudge that a little bit. Now I'm gonna put in the eyes. So there are two eyes and they tuck a little bit behind this fluffy muzzle. On this one, I transferred the eyelash markings on, I didn't do that on all of the blocks. So on some of the sample blocks, you'll see some where I did not do the eyelashes. I wanted to show you that you can do it either way. And the ones I left them off are the ones where you really wouldn't be able to see the eyelashes anyway. So one is a black and white cross hatched fabric and the eyelashes just wouldn't show up very well. So use your best judgment on, first of all, whether you want to stitch those eyelashes, but also if they'll even show up on the fabric that you chose. 
And lastly, we're going to put his nose into place. All right, that is this guy. He is all ready to fuse down. So I'm going to take him over to the ironing board, double check, make sure nothing shifted when I was transferring him, and uh, get him fused down. And then I'm going to outline all of the pieces and then bring them back here and show you the finished block and also the other samples that I did in some other colors so you can see them, some other options. All right, here is the fluffy puppy, all finished, all outlined. I will say that outline stitching and cutting out all of these little pointy fluffy shapes is kind of a bear. So both the cutting of them and the stitching of them but I do think she's awfully cute. That's just a very, very cute, fluffy puppy face. So I did this one in the, my, I love the color, the contrast between the gingham play fabric print and the dots fabric print. Um, but I did, I, I showed you this one in the video because it was very easy to see the contrast between the pieces and also because the markings showed up very clearly on these fabrics but I wanted to show you a couple other fabrics too, including some that are more realistic look. So here's that puppy in some black and white on a bright green background. Love how this looked. I really love the combination of black and white and this really vibrant lime green. Um, so this just uses all different prints from the black and white fabric bundle that I sell in the shop. That bundle has different prints in it, so it won't necessarily have these exact prints in it, but it does have a range of more white than black, more black than white, and more half and half, so that you can pull out and get a, a face like this where you have some lighter parts and some darker parts of the pattern. And I, just to point out, you'll see on all of these blocks, the forehead, muzzle, and shoulders, I used the lighter of my fabrics, and the eyes and the ears, I used the darker of the fabrics. This is a really common color pattern on a lot of different breeds of dogs, of these fluffy dogs in particular. And so I wanted, even if I was making a blue dog, I wanted to convey that same um, sense of the realism, the same kind of color patterns that you see in real life. And I find it really effective to do that by putting darks where darks would be in real life and lights where lights would be. So you're gonna see that same dark light contrast in all of these. Um, so that's the very graphic black and white. I also did this print, this fun version, um, a purple puppy using some of the batiks. So all of my, in my batiks, the batik rainbow fabric bundle that I sell in my shop has a light and a dark of each color. So it worked really well for this dog. And then this is from the muted rainbow fabric bundle, the background. And um, the batiks work really well for animals because they just have that kind of dappled, mottled look to them. And now one more. And this is one more realistic version of the dog. So I used the same fabric for all of the light pieces. This is the lighter gray from my Warm Neutrals fabric bundle. And then I used two different darker grays, one for around the eyes and one for the ears, uh, just to get that little bit of variety in there. And I liked the way this, the stripes worked really well on the ears. So different color combinations. I also wanted to show you one other different option that I did. This one has the eyelashes and the purple one has the eyelashes. And the original one I showed the eyelashes on, but I did not stitch the eyelashes on this one. It looks just as cute without them. So if you don't want the fuss of stitching the eyelashes, feel free to skip that. But also be mindful, even if I had stitched the eyelashes, they would not have shown up well on this very cross hatchy fabric that's a black on white print. And so even though the eyelashes look really cute and I don't mind stitching them, there's no sense in stitching them on it, this particular fabric. So think about that with your fabric choices as well. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next month.